Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is a very special day because today I review my brand new GM mid-engine sports car, my brand new C8 Corvette? Wait a minute. All right guys, all joking aside, I'm Anthony and this is Tales from the Junkyard and today we're gonna be reviewing my 1988 Pontiac Fiero GT V6 with a five speed and of course T tops. It's gonna be amazing. This car is amazing. This whole video is gonna be awesome. And if you guys like this video today, well consider subscribing. Hit the like button and maybe share it. And let me know if you like all the other videos on this channel. Uh, but let's move on with this thing. All right, guys. So like I said earlier, this is my 1988 Pontiac Fiero GT V6 2.8 with five speed and T tops. I know long name, but primarily just. Fiero GT. Now, this thing's really, really cool. Um, quick background, this car was introduced back in 84, or at least the Fiero line, and it was designed originally way, way before it even was introduced as a kind of a sports car for Pontiac, right? You have the Chevy uh, Corvette, and that was its Chevy thing, and Pontiac was always sort of supposed to be like the performance vehicles of the 60s and the 70s, and so they, in, in keeping with that name, they wanted to get something that was you know, a sports car for them. So in comes the Fiero. And the Fiero never really got off. The, I mean, this thing was in the gestation period for like years and years and years and years. And it wasn't until they got pitched as a, no, no, this isn't a sports car. It's a personal commuter car. You know, two passenger kind of A to B vehicle. Um, and it would be economical. It'd be good on gas. And it would work, you know, just a, a little thing to have fun with. Well... Enter 1984 and the first Fiero, uh, well, 83 actually, Fiero, Fiero concept came out. And in 84, it was introduced as a production model. Those cars had a four speed stick shift or a three speed automatic. Uh, and all the parts, all the suspension pieces, and a lot of the pieces, little knickknacks here and there in the vehicle were a parts bin special. So this thing had parts from all different types of cars. So in order to keep down the cost and for it not to be too, uh, you know, specific and too special, they had to, you know, dumb it down somehow. So the very first ones weren't all that great. Not to mention there was an issue with them catching fire because of a bad oil pan design. And if you guys want to know more about the history of this car, there's several videos out there about that. That's really, really good. One that comes to mind is the, the Donut Media one and also uh, Doug DeMiro did one. So if you want to check more about the history, you can go check those out. But Today, we're just gonna check out this vehicle right here. So let's check out what makes this thing special. So one thing uh, to get it out of the way, of course, it's the shape of it. The overall look of this car looks exotic. It invokes like a Lotus or a Ferrari or something European, you know, something different that the Americans were just not doing at the time. And the really cool thing is like the emblem, for example, let's zoom in on that real quick. So this emblem right here, is meant to invoke like exoticness, you know, Fiero GT. The word Fiero even means proud in Italian. So, you know, Fiero, fire, you know, fire breathing, proud creature. Uh, it's got the pop-up headlights, the, you know, the 80s pop-up headlights, which is amazing. Um, let's see here. We got, let's go to the T-tops. Look at that. Those things are so cool. And I'll take those off in a really quick minute. But the idea behind the T-tops is to give you sort of that target top you know, but without sacrificing too much rigidity, instead of having the full target top, which would be a whole panel that comes off, this deal right there, that little spine, that helps with rigidity. And so that actually makes it a little bit more rigid than the true target top, which is like the, the panel that comes off. Um, this vehicle uh, is the GT, so it means it has the coupe kind of deal here. And what I mean by that is you'll see this this roof line goes all the way to the back here and into the back end of the car. The original ones have like this little notch back where it kind of cuts down this way or it cuts down like halfway into here. And those were cool, but they wanted something that looked a little bit better and they wanted to like get away from the problem of the, the cars that caught on fire and stuff. So in order to differenti differentiate those cars from the newer models, well, they added a different roof line, you know, give you options and stuff. Um, let's see here. The other thing about this car is the wheels, they are staggered. What I mean by that is they're both, you know, the back and the front are 15s, uh, but they're narrower in front than they are in the back. You can see the back has a slight little lip over there, and these are essentially flush. Let's get a better angle on that. See, pretty much flush. 
and there are 15 um, 205 60 in the front and in the back they're a 215 uh, 60 15 so you know a little bit wider meat a little bit bigger in the back because the engines in the back oh yes the engines in the back of these things or mid-engine right kind of like an MR2 think MR2 but earlier and we'll look at that in a second but it's got this really nice wing that I like it flows with the vehicle it's got that body line that epic 80s body line on the side there and people think this is kind of like a bump and really it's it's part of the vehicle the other thing that's really cool about this vehicle is a lot of you would know that the Corvette which is of this vintage right the Corvette that came out at this time looked very similar except obviously longer V8 in the front and all that good stuff but that was made out of fiberglass that was claimed to fame is that a fiberglass sports car for America this believe it or not is made out of plastic primarily so it's got a steel chassis right so super rigid but all these body panels so this panel the front clip the hood the lids for the lights uh the mirrors everything every body panel on this is, that isn't glass is plastic now the idea behind this was to make something lightweight something easy to replace something easy to fix and doesn't cost too much to produce which is a really cool idea and there's another car company that took that to heart called saturn and you can look them look them up if you want but they basically took that concept and ran with it but yeah so this whole body all the body on this whole thing is plastic which is pretty crazy but it's held up pretty good the other thing about this car that's really cool is that this thing was actually restored about seven years ago so now this particular vehicle belonged to a gentleman um that i bought it from and well of course right <laughs> and this thing uh he went through the whole car he literally took it all apart uh made everything that was wrong good and fixed it as best as he could to stock specifications upgraded the minor things here and there and pretty much drove it drove it like he meant it um this thing was driven like a sports car and he built it so that it would last run right all that good stuff so this is a seven year old uh rest, rest uh, restoration so that's pretty cool right awesome and uh honestly i'm not sure who restores fieros i guess this guy does but you know cool i found someone as weird as me <laughs> anyway um but yeah so we got the nice cool blacked out sort of tail lights in the back and this actually has a pretty cool little party favor and i'll show you that in a minute so this thing's got a cool little party trick um when you turn on the ignition as you'll see right here see that that glowing pontiac <laughs> now while you're driving this thing's on the entire time isn't that pretty cool and so that's kind of to give it that special like wow that's pretty cool they're proud of this vehicle so boom there you go pontiac i think that's pretty awesome i don't know and of course this video would not be complete if i didn't show you the pop-up headlights as right here oh look at that sweet 80s goodness now the hilarious part about these lights and i'll show you in a little bit how these operate but the way the the way they solved this problem is pretty hilarious now what they did here to solve this issue now if you guys know the bmw 8 series right the early 90s 8 series they had also pop-up headlights now the way they solved this issue you see how it's inside the the vicinity of like the hood or the front trunk well this thing uh instead of doing what that bmw does where it leaves the actual headlights and the lids you know inside there's like holes when you open the hood this just let me show you just let me show you real right. quick so let me show you real quick what that looks like so by the way look at how clean this thing is i don't think i've ever seen one of these this clean in my life you know at least not for sale but anyway so those are the headlights right here right the buckets so wait where are the lids well they live right here they actually live within the hood let me show you that real quick here you see that they stay with the hood so as the mortar pushes up you know against these it goes up and it has resistance because of these torsion bars here so as the light goes up it actually pushes on this it's pretty crazy isn't it i guess it's a solution to a problem right and there's a radio as you can see i mean a radiator sorry radio right <laughs> learn to talk man um but anyway you got the headlights here lids here interesting stuff you got your spare in the middle here and your jack obviously all your crucials are here so your brakes your uh, master cylinder uh for the clutch your ac components window washer fluid all that good stuff so it's all here and of course you know in a true doug demiro fashion 
we get the sticker right there. Look at that thing. The glorious how to do whatever that is. I guess change the tire. Yep. Instructional sticker. That's pretty awesome. The fact that this thing still has that is pretty great. Now you'll notice something strange about this car. Now let me close this hood. And there we go. So now let's take a look at the body lines of this thing. Now look at that, that really cool line. I just love the way this thing looks. Has that very Lotus Esprit kind of vibe. I love them. I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. But anyway, you'll notice how pretty undisturbed line, right? Across the vehicle. Look at that, right? Pretty okay. Nothing crazy. Pretty awesome. Well, let's check out the other side real quick. That's pretty much the same, right? Undisturbed. Nice little line. You know, you got the side body molding. But wait, what is this? Oh, we got a little grill for a scoop. That, my friends, is the air intake for the little V6 that lives back there. And on top, we have our fuel door. Now, this little intake here, there's actually a hole. I don't know if you can see it, probably can't. But anyway, there's a hole in there that actually goes into a filter and that goes into the engine. Now, let's take a look at these cell panels. See those grills? They're actually meant to ventilate heat. And there's one on each side. The engine lives kind of somewhere in the middle here. So in this vicinity, right? And the battery sits over there. You can see that the label and the filter and stuff sits over here. But you know what? I think it's time we see this engine. All right. And there's the amazing, all powerful 60 degree V6 2.8 liter in all its glory. So the engine sits sideways or transverse, as you can see right there. And uh, this. Transmission's over here, engine's over here. We got our uh, cruise control, uh, you know, and pretty much that's it. It's a basic setup. Your air intake, like I told you over here, and your body battery sits over there. But I mean, look at that. Fiero, I think that looks amazing. They got that Ferrari vibe, you know, with the red intake and everything. That's pretty cool. Um, this engine is an interesting little motor. So it's a 60 degree V6. So it's a very narrow angle V6. Um, that was actually originally designed to work on smaller trucks. So this engine exists in this car. It exists in uh, the Camaro and Firebird of the years of those years, and the Isuzu uh, Trooper and and the Rodeo kind of stuff. So Isuzu Trooper, Suzuki Rodeo, those have this engine as well. So this engine, oh, and like the, some of the little smaller Chevys had this motor. So this 2.8 liter lived in a lot of vehicles. Hence the whole part's been special. The nice thing about this engine, and a lot of people don't, may not know about this, and some of this stuff I've learned over owning this vehicle for the last couple of weeks is, this actually is tuned a little differently for the Fiero. So now this makes a mind-melting, earth-shattering 140 horsepower and, and uh, about 130 foot-pounds of torque. And, you know, this was an 88, so by now, I don't know how many of those horses have escaped the stable, but, you know, it's still, I've driven it. it, it pulls pretty good for what it is. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but hey, you know what? It does the job, and I like it. And it sounds pretty good. Uh, it does have a bit of an exhaust leak, and I'll fix that, but that's with age. You know, this guy, like I said, he drove it how you're supposed to drive these. But anyway, I think that looks pretty cool. I mean, look at that. Look at that. For a Pontiac in the 80s, that looks amazing. But anyway, so that's the engine that powers this. It drives really, really good. Um, oh yeah, and this is the trunk, obviously. So the thing, the big thing about Chevys, and, and you'll see it in the modern stuff. Uh, earlier you heard me call this thing a C8. You know, obviously uh, to make fun of the fact that the new Corvette C8 is touted as the first mid-engine sports car from Chevy, and that's true partially, but Pontiac did it first. Um, and you know, there's, there's that. So this trunk is designed to hold uh golf clubs or a set of golf clubs in here and that's been like a running theme with chevy sports cars they have to have space for golf clubs right just like the corvette so this believe it or not has space for golf clubs and the t-tops actually live in here when you remove them and uh, you know what let's go ahead and check out the interior on that note okay so getting into this bad boy is pretty interesting as you notice there's no obvious door handle right from up here can't really see one there's not one sticking on top of here well it's actually integrated into the body line as you see here, you go into here, pop it. And this door, you can't tell from here, this thing weighs a ton. So <laughs> for a plastic door and everything, this thing is very heavy. 
And the reason for that is inside of here, there's actually an X-frame bracing thing that is for, you know, for crashing. Believe it or not, this entire car actually got a four-star crash rating, you know, for a sports car. That's impressive for any car, let alone a sports car. And I guess this thing's super rigid, which is pretty cool. And you can feel it, you know, in the suspension, it's very, very tidy, but anyway so yeah that's pretty cool and you know there's the door panel nothing crazy you got your power door locks here and you know uh this just was pretty much on almost every gm vehicle ever uh aside for the logo would change but yeah pretty basic door card you had your little pocket here you could put stuff in there map whatever this is your dash i personally like this steering wheel i think that's pretty cool it's classy a lot of these fieros came with like this big old rectangle in the middle it looks like uh off the porsches i like this better it looks a little more sporty it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so you control everything through here. Your dimmer switch. These are your lights, your parking lights. Oh, there you go. See? Parking lights. These are the uh, the pop-up lights. Your vents for your AC heater. This is in a self-contained pod. So it's all in one area. That's right there. That switch is for the, um, the trunk in the back. The actual hood, though, is there's a latch on the bottom here. You pull and that pops it. Let's see here, you got your ambient lighting. Of course, the really cool glass T-tops. Ah, so good. Uh, the five-speed manual. And it does have a, a fully loaded uh, stereo system for the time. Um, you know, it's got your, your <laughs> cassette player, which is freaking choice and premium. And, you know, your assortment of gauges. So temp, uh, oil pressure, battery, fuel, all that good stuff. So, pretty simple, pretty easy. It's pretty roomy, for me at least. I'm only five foot eight, so I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not humongous <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination, but I fit very nicely in here. And with these T-tops, they actually remove a little bit of the roof, because all you get is that glass, and you actually get a bit more, you know, headroom. So that works out really nicely, but you know, I think it's enough talking. Let's take these bad boys off. Let me show you how to take these bad boys off and see what it looks like. So first, you see this? So these actually are lockable, so no one gets in here, no one wants to try to steal it. But in any case, there's the latch over here. You can see it right there. So this latch pulls out, right? You unlatch it here. Okay, and that takes care of one side. Let's, uh, let's pop this trunk real quick here so we can put them away. All right, so let's open this up. There we go. So we got one open. Let's go to this other side. Same thing, you can reach around, you can see the, uh, oh, reach around, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> poor choice of words. Um, pop this other one, right? And from here, you can lift up. Ho, 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 look at that. Right, and that pretty much kind of removes it. So. Here, I'm gonna set you guys down for a second. All right, guys, and there we go. Look at that. Open top goodness. Now, see that seal? That's what keeps you from all the weather that goes in. These tend to go bad, so not a huge problem for me. I'm gonna keep this thing garaged, but other than that, I mean, this looks perfect. Look at that. Look at how awesome, and then I know it doesn't look like much from out here, but it's not what this looks like out here. It's the experience from the inside. And what I mean by that is, look, at this ho oh, ho <laughs> yeah look at that that's awesome and if you're gonna live in california like myself might as well enjoy the nice weather we get out here most of the time when you know it's not on fire out here <laughs> and, and uh yeah look at this look at that that's so good now up here we got our uh map lights right so on off these are your center lights so when you open the door 
Yeah, no, look. Oh, dear. Ah, behind the scenes. <laughs> we got the lights in the middle there, right? Obviously, my massive back seat. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, look at this. This is really, really cool. So, yeah, so this is the bar I talked to you about. This thing adds rigidity as opposed to the complete target top that's removable. Those things tend to be a little bit more flexible than these, if you will. But yeah, I mean, this is pretty cool. This is amazing. I've always wanted one of these and I finally get a chance to own one. And you know what? Enough yapping. I think we should go for a ride. What do you guys think? Yes, I think so. I think so. I think so. <laughs> Let's do this. All right, so how does it drive? Well, <laughs> it drives amazing, at least for me. You know, uh, this is actually the first time I've ever owned a proper sports car, especially one with like a stick shift, engine in the back the whole nine yards this is my first the closest thing i've ever owned to like a supercar possibly the closest thing i'll ever own <laughs> to a supercar but um the nice thing about this car is the way it handles it's so neutral feeling uh, it's not super back heavy it's not super front heavy it just feels like it's at home at the road you know just very sporty extremely sporty now the thing about this car is that when it debuted back in 88 or actually the Fiero lineup in 84, right? That car was not really this car. That car was an attempt to introduce this car to the market. And then hopefully over the years, evolve it into what this became. Now this wasn't supposed to be its final form. Um, eventually they wanted to add more power, obviously a better suspension in the back, that whole thing. But this is about as far as they got. Now this is why I say this particular car is super special and the reason for that is in 88 um, they had finally figured out how to get the suspension they wanted originally for the vehicle into the vehicle so they had done all the suspension all that stuff and so the front suspension at the very least is a special Fiero suspension now what that means is in before 88 the entire suspension was made out of uh, McPherson struts now what that means is it's a shock absorber with the spring and a bearing. So it eliminates the need for, you know, upper control arms and things of that nature. A lot of, a lot of uh, lower end cars use them because it's a simple package. It's easy to make, slap it on and it takes care of a bunch of stuff, which is fine for economy, but not the greatest when it comes to, you know, handling. And so there are still cars that use it for handling, but they usually incorporate upper control arms and stuff. Unfortunately, this didn't do that. So. What this originally was designed for was, you know, upper lower control arms, like a sports car with uh, a coil spring and a shock through the middle, almost a coilover, but a little more old school. And that was what originally was supposed to go into this car. And that's what originally, and that's what ended up in this 88 is that front suspension they wanted. In the back, all they could really do for the moment was instead of having, like I said, that only that McPherson strut and maybe like a trailing arm, they did a three link in the back with the McPherson struts. So you still had the struts, but you had better control of it. And so the suspension on this year of Fiero is considered the best by far. Unfortunately, it was a one year only. That being said, the other thing that makes this car kind of a unicorn is the, other than that it's white, uh, is the fact that it's got the T-tops on it, right, from the factory. Uh, it is an 88 with this nice suspension. Again, when you're only, uh, it's got the five speed and the V6. Those three, the, that whole combination right there makes this one of the rarest cars or the rarest Fieros ever made. And the fact that someone took the time to restore this thing, which is pretty crazy. But I mean, oh, and you'll notice that I put the T-tops back on after the last part of the video. And that's because honestly, you wouldn't be able to hear me had um, the t-tops been off and kind of like a, being around on a convertible stuff there's too much noise in here for you to be able to actually hear me talk but anyway it's a great car it's an awesome vehicle um i know that this is often compared to the mr2 which you know would make sense is it kind of debuted around the same time but believe it or not <clears throat> there's a video that um motor week did about the mr2 versus this fiero and they tend to prefer the Fiero only because and only because it's uh, more comfortable. It ended up being more comfortable. It's got the better seats overall and it's got a little bit more room. And it really wasn't that much slower than the MR2. A couple of seconds here and there. So it worked out to where they were pretty even. 
this just was a better road car. And uh, the MR2 of the time, the first generation MR2, was pretty funny because that thing was honestly considered to be too small and a little like comically light, you know what I mean? Um, if anyone that has one of those vehicles, they'll understand how tight those things are from the inside. And so for a larger person, that just doesn't make sense to get, right, as a consumer product. And so these outsold those MR2s pretty much for the entirety of the lifespan. Unfortunately, this car still got canceled for reasons. And um, the MR2 lived on till about 95, 96 uh, in the traditional MR2 form. And then eventually they made the, the MR Spider, the MR2 Spider, which lasted in like the early 2000s. But even then, if you'll notice the second generation MR2 looks suspiciously, suspiciously similar to this generation Fiero, which I find hilarious. I mean, it might not be a coincidence, Maybe Toyota said, hey, those things were popular, let's just copy it. I don't know. And I'm sure I'm going to get hate from all the Toyota guys out there. But anyway, I think that's pretty interesting. And actually, they did make a special version of this Fiero in like the mid-80s uh, called the Mara. Now, the Mara was essentially a Ferrari kind of clone, but it was a tribute car in reality. And it looked a lot like the 308 Ferrari of the time. And uh, it, it was, you know, it was basically the same chassis, just different paneling, right? And it was done up in leather on the inside. It looked really, really good. But it was essentially a well-done kit car. And uh, <laughs> they didn't change any of the powertrain or any of that stuff. It was just, you know, a reskinned car. And, you know, Ferrari put a stop to that fairly quickly. At any rate, I'm excited about having this car. Once again, this is, this is a dream for me. And, uh... Yeah, man. Uh, I intend to pretty much keep this thing the way it came from the factory. I don't really want to mess with it too much. Obviously, upgrade things here and there to make it more drivable. But I'm going to enjoy what it is and try not to mess with it. I already got a project at home. I don't need another one. You know, this so it's great. This is also the first time I bought a car that's this good right off the bat. Aside from like a new car. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, I love it, man. I hope you guys do too. guys that is my review of my 1988 Pontiac Fiero GT V6 5 speed with of course t-tops I hope you guys like this video um, and once again like share and subscribe and you know do what you gotta do and uh, yeah I'll see you guys next time take care and also let me know in the comments what you think did you like this car do you like any other projects I'm doing do you have any suggestions drop me a line in the comments and we'll see you there